So long you should go ahead. I think that's having a tech issue. Hello, hi. I'm not audible. As we can hear you. Oh, okay, you can hear me. Okay, okay, good. So I had to log out and log in again. Uh, hi, Lakesh. Hi. Sorry about that. Yeah, That's I think okay. some issue. Uh, typical tech issues, right? Yeah. <laughs> and interestingly, we are all from tech companies here. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, Lakesh. So um, we had taken permission from Lakesh to actually record this session. So we will be sharing the recording later on YouTube and uh, also his uh, sharing documents will be shared later. But um, firstly, I would like to introduce Lokesh. So he is the design research lead in IBM Tririgger, which um, and he usually is uh, designing more for enterprise products. So um, also he works, I think, a bit in AI, and that's where our conversation started uh, initially. So uh, yeah, uh, so I would like to, uh, yeah. So um, Lokesh is uh, in user research, and he began his journey as a qualitative market researcher. Uh, and then he gradually transitioned to UX, and he's now more into designing uh, products. Uh, not just doing research, but also the UX part and the product design part. So he has worked across uh, different product categories, automobile technology, FMCG, electronics, and of course, uh, yeah, he's now with IBM. And as a UX researcher, he has experience working on products like Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Amazon Fire TV Stick, et cetera. So um, here, a few things to note if you are joining this session. Um, which, you know, Harris, if you can show that slide. So if you are joining the session, please uh, switch off your cameras and also mute your microphones for the entire session. And that will also give you a better, uh, you know, connection and better um, speed. Um, and also uh, for the microphone, you can unmute it at the end of the session when we will be taking all the Q&A. So you can drop all your questions in the chat of uh, Zoom. And uh, since there are people who also joins us through live streaming, so Lokesh, uh, you will see some people joining us through Zoom, but there is about typically about 100 to 150 people who joins us through live streaming, sometimes even more. Uh, we don't know. Usually it depends on session to session. So, uh, but at least 100 to 150 people join us internally in Lazada through live streaming. And, uh, they usually put in the questions in the live streaming session. So what Harris does is uh, puts uh, paste these questions in the chat of the Zoom. So you will be able to see those questions in the chat function of Zoom. And we'll take those session, uh, questions right at the end. So uh, we just um, would request everyone not to take any screenshots or not to take any video recordings of this. Anyway, the recording will be later on shared in by us. Um, also, um, just if you're asking questions, please ask it through the chat and just wait for it to be answered. There will be translations. So for those who want to listen to it, uh, the session in Chinese, uh, you can go and just uh, click on the interpretation function, which is under the globe icon or more at the bottom of the screen, uh, depends on which browser you are using. Uh, and then you can see the interpretation function. You can choose Chinese, but we would also suggest that you mute the original audio in that case. Otherwise, you will hear both English and Chinese at the same time, which may be confusing. So yeah, that's basically it. And then we would like to invite uh, Lokesh to uh, just start. And um, thanks, Lokesh, for doing this. Thanks, everyone else, also for joining us today. Um, Lokesh, you would like to share your screen, maybe? OK, great. So you already have that. <laughs> And uh, thanks. Uh, over to you, Lakesh. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sanjita. I hope the Singapore Malaysia team are awake after that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we are. <laughs> Very okay. much. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me and sharing my experience around this. So I'll start off with a disclaimer that this is more of an experience sharing, sharing session for me rather than any preaching or teaching around research roadmaps. One of the good things I've learned as a researcher that you need to keep evolving with time and with learnings from other people as well. So it's 
uh, sharing session for me and I would expect people to try it out yourself and develop something of your own. So that's what the intent from this session, the takeaway is. So please feel free to reach out for questions, for your suggestions, or even, you know, like if you try something out and this could be a different challenge altogether uh, because it's not something you do pretty regularly. It's more internal, and but it's a good experience for you as a researcher to go through actually. So that's what I could talk about. So, and so like how this idea, so I'll just share a small story around how this idea popped out about enterprise products, because I have like one of my friend who's working for Google, he's more into B2C domain, where customers are easily available for his pr product. And uh, they do, uh, you know, like, um, uh, so it's, you know, they just hire agency, like, like, like hire a few customers, do some research pretty easily. But enterprise products on the other hand are a bit more challenging. So challenging is more a negative word. I'll talk about more of an like opportunity to evolve as a researcher there. So, so it has like a number of domains like um, customer success manager, CRMs or uh, uh, project management. So these teams, all these teams are aligned together. Sometimes they work separately or in silos and they have a different challenge altogether when you work as a researcher and bring them all, like all of them together in a single you know, like platform and that was something which is common, commonly used for everyone in the team. Secondly, in the, in, the, in the enterprise products, your users and your clients or the buyers might not be the same. So you need to think about your marketing perspective as a researcher and you need to also think about your usability and user experience from a different perspective altogether. So that's where the opportunity to think multidimensionally as a researcher is like really important. And creating a research roadmap is something which I also tried in the last year I learned from my mentors and managers and you know like the colleagues who did this like earlier but it's quite an interesting activity which i'll take you through exactly why is it important and how it can help you evolve as a researcher and, and you know like sustain as a researcher and especially bigger organizations which are huge in teams which have like multi-million revenue of uh, like around the products so it will help you there okay so I work on Triliga. Triliga is again an enterprise product which has its uh, you know, like footprints in uh, integrated workplace management systems. And we have recently come up with the Watson X, which is on the same lines of ChatGPT. And it's you know like uh, uh, it's still like evolving. We are still trying that out in the market right now. So yeah, quite a few things going on actively from that perspective. Just a sec. Okay. So what would the key takeaways from this uh, this particular session would be around that? You understand like what research roadmap and what product roadmap does and how they are different to each other second why and like the importance of having a research roadmap for a research especially from the enterprise products perspective when to create it because like most people aren't aware that when should i initiate having that, that like roadmap deconstructing the process like how to go about doing it and lastly like if you have any suggestions feedback for me as well because i'm also learning with time so please feel free to reach out and tell me that First and foremost, like with my understanding, like when I joined like, like the last company, I also thought that the product and like research roadmaps are same, they're in the same line, but actually it's not. Product roadmap is more wide, very exhaustive. And they, and like bigger organizations like IBM, Google, they have this not south vision, like five, year, five, 10 years down the line, how this product will evolve from the market, from the users, multidimensional perspective. So that's where my understanding started, you know, like developing about having a research roadmap and why it is important to have a research roadmap, but it can be a guiding line for sure for a research roadmap to exist. So if you have that notion in line that, okay, product roadmap and research roadmap are same, that's not the case. That's under truth actually. So how it is different. So like what I learned as a researcher working on a roadmap that it's primarily, primarily research related needs of the team of the product what are they thinking around it's more strategic thinking around research so you need to think strategically that it should have a combination of your evaluative strategic thinking what are the key areas where you need to delve deeper from user perspective from product perspective from market perspective and even the global perspective around that product because if your um, users of your products are based in different time zones and different geographies it's more all the more important to think from that perspective that okay where is the weak market and where is the strong market? So you need to identify all those things and think very, uh, you know, like, like openly in terms of that. Third, 
it's about showcasing a timeline to achieve those research goals. Having a timeline as a researcher for a year, I think it's really important that where are you putting your time and energy into in terms of research. Why? Product roadmaps, as I mentioned, that it's more exhaustive, it's more broad, and it inculcates or encapsulates actually, you know, like different domains, like coming from UX, marketing, content, design, research, support operations, it has everything. So you might not like need to get into everything as a researcher to talk about it. And secondly, it could be a guiding talk for you. So you might not copy and paste as is, you might pick up a couple of things from that, uh, like after speaking to your stakeholders and then work around it. So it can be a guiding dog, but it cannot be same as your research roadmap. So that is like way more different here. So understand the difference between the two when you think about it, right? Coming over to why it's important to have a research roadmap. So for me, like, uh, like I'll tell you my situation when I joined my company and for the first four or five months, I did not have any clarity exactly. So I was getting some ad hoc like requests as a researcher around usability, around conducting some diary studies on few of the aspects, but I did not have any broad vision about how to, how my research has to be planned from the product roadmap perspective. And I had around like a dozen of stakeholders representing like marketing, design, content, engineering, dev teams, tech teams, because each domain in your product has a PM and you need to, you know, like get in touch with them, talk to them, understand their needs around that. So you need to understand that totally. And like being new to the organization, I think four months to understand the product, then talking to people and you need to have certain objective in mind when you interact with the senior folks in the team. Without that, I don't think it will make any sense. It will be a waste of time for you and them as well if you just interact with them without any objective. So it's imperative that you have that objective in mind prior to meeting. Research roadmap activity will give you that objective exactly what are you trying to achieve through this activity that you are doing with them and how it can benefit them and you as a researcher board. So you need to establish that somewhere in their minds. So for me, it was more of a collaboration and connect. So I didn't knew 12 plus stakeholders in my team. I knew only like three or four of them. So it was important for me to have that collaboration and connect with them. And like one of the expectations from researchers, especially user researchers is that you have that connect and repo with your stakeholders timely. So that anytime if you feel a need to do anything, it's easy for you to reach out to them. Like, and they are, you know, like, like evenly open to help you out with, with, with those aspects. So this roadmap activity really helped me in collaborating with all the stakeholders who was like, who were working on the product, established a timely connect with them. So that helped me there. So you can also try it out when you conduct your activity, you can just, so the stakeholders you have not spoken to, you don't know about. So it will give you a different perspective about the product altogether. So do that. Help me prioritize and negotiate. Prioritization is important in terms of research that where should I put my efforts as a researcher into? What is the most talked about area or you know like challenge which needs my attention as a researcher? Negotiations are equally important. So when you have so many stakeholders and they think that certain aspect of product requires a research and you don't have a bandwidth to take up that. So it helps you negotiate well there. So it helps you establish that, okay, you already are working on it and there's a like roadmap aligned to it. Depending on your engagement, you can ask them to push it accordingly or you have more resources. So that's up to you how you do it. So it will really help you because everybody's on board around negotiations uh, or like uh, like on the roadmap. So it will help you negotiate better with the teams. Third is building transparency. So when you like already have a roadmap in place, it will keep you transparent as a researcher that, okay, what are exactly are we working on like on the projects and what are the priorities and what are the key aspects and the expectations around those studies and how it will translate into product or like the user needs, understand user needs around those. So that will really help you out. Firstly, it's planning and resource allocation. So suppose if you have four researchers into a team and you know that this is a roadmap and who is aligned where, it will be easier for you to allocate those resources and what kind of bandwidth is available to, to a researcher. For example, someone who's working on a usability session. So, it's, so it means a four weeks kind of a timeline. 
so you know that the next month someone is available to take up something new so that's where you can align you you can plan accordingly for your resources into the team and that really facilitates planning so you are planned you are you know like completely in control of your projects on the on the roadmap and and like also in the team itself like around the product what i also get to hear from the people that okay when should i do it so that's a pretty standard question which which i get to hear like very often from the people within my organization as well that okay when should i do it so when i taught took this session around the research roadmap within my team i told them that it's when you're new to the organization since i was also new like four months old i decided to take up this activity uh with the consultation with my manager so, but to make sure that there isn't any existing roadmap for first and foremost foremost okay think about it and uh, uh, like understand from your like other researchers fellow researchers who are already working on some past work that has gone into it understand everything and then you can propose working on a research roadmap when you're new so that it gives you a chance to also interact with your stakeholders secondly when you have no clarity about research is to be conducted so you don't know where to go about how will you you know like your next year plan where you'll be spending your time as a researcher and your efforts into it when you have no clarity then you can propose having a roadmap activity with your stakeholders lastly new year new roadmap so if you already have a roadmap you can revisit the last one but if you don't have if you are uh, you know like um, closer to the end of the year try doing some activity with the stakeholders understand their priorities in terms of like researches where they want research to spend their time to it's imperative to talk about that and develop a research roadmap for the entire year or next two years whatever way you want to formulate it you can do like that okay next comes the process around it so i just try to deconstruct the entire process which i took uh, like as a researcher to build this roadmap activity so so it has like three stages like one is obviously like researchers can really understand that okay so i identify my users i understand and i do some activity qualitative interactions with them and then analyze so that's the first stage second stage is all about your prioritization and finalization of your themes so once you have entire data you have themes in mind now you prioritize and finalize them together third one which is more to do a revisit so you need to constantly revisit and update your roadmap based on the requirements because in enterprise products things change rapidly so a mandate from a top engineer came that okay you need to focus on these things keep everything aside and focus on this so you need to update your roadmaps accordingly and pretty actively so it can be on the quarterly basis on the half yearly basis it's totally totally up to you as a researcher like how do you do it and based on the requirement from the product team so i'll just talk about these stages in bit detail for the researchers it would be more easier to understand the first stage for the non researchers i'll talk about in detail as well so like not to worry that uh, you are not a researcher and you won't be able to understand but it's not a rocket science it's more logical in nature right so please you can just go through it and i'll be sharing with you recording for sure first and foremost being identify the right set of people for yourself like who should i spoke to so when i started uh, developing a roadmap activity and i spoke to my manager that okay who should i spoke to and she said that who you think are the people really matters who can give you some concrete data around your vision for the roadmap as a product roadmap who can make decisions and who are aware of the clients and customer needs so people from sales and marketing they are in direct touch with the clients and customers so they know the relevances and the pain points of those customers and when i say customers it's not just the clients but also sometimes users because users raise some tickets on the product uh, portal and about the grievances that they face and that portal collates the entire list of pain points and it's been shared by the sales to the sales team by the clients that okay these are the pain areas which our users are facing so those things so these are the parameters to decide who should be included in the roadmap activity for yourself so i think that's important to understand so when you do it just ask these three things that okay like is the person fitting well into this picture or not so these are the parameters you can take up so the core team members who can be part of this roadmap is could be from the product management team so like enterprise products 
has like seven to eight PMs working on different aspects of the product. Design team, primarily they are like more focused on the design of the product and like making the experience better. Engineering team who are responsible to enhance the performance of the product in a better way. And also like obviously like sales and marketing because they are in direct touch with the customers in some way or the other. And they have a better idea about like, what is it that client is asking for going forward? So you have different dimensions to understand from all those aspects. So I did this, I reached out to like each of the member who was pretty senior 20 years working on the product, like even like seven to eight years into the product. So everyone gave me the perspective around it, exactly how I should be going about and the kind of feedback coming from them. Second comes exploration aspect. So now you, once you've identified your users or your participants, now the next stage is around exploration of your uh, like areas. So I struggle with like, what kind of question should I be asking to them? Like, is it even, you know, like, like making sense? So for developing those questions, you need to first do your homework, do some secondary kind of research for your own product, the kind of researches which have been done in the past, read some visiting documents, uh, like if they're available, and also just you know like um, keep an eye on the other researches which are currently ongoing by some other researchers so you are aware exactly what is it that needs more attention from the current and from the future perspective so it's important to do that so explore so you need to be prepared do your homework well before you start interacting with these stakeholders you sh should not be sounding naive or that you are unaware about like the, the like the updates about the product and everything you should be asking some smart questions to them around it. Obviously, like it's all about qualitative interactions for you know, like, like 45 to 60 minutes, best in person. But if you are remote, that's okay as well. I did all my sessions remotely around 12, 15 sessions were done since all my stakeholders were based out of US, Canada. So there was like my way of doing it, but yes, quite fruitful. So, what questions to be asked? So I'll be like pretty generic here in terms of asking questions. So start off with like pretty generic one. Like what are the responsible for delivering on the product? Like what are the key roles and like responsibilities in the company? Like what are they taking care of? So start pretty generic. Then you start asking specific questions around the users. Okay, like what keeps you up at night about these users? What are the concern areas or challenges or the pain areas? What is it if you were you know, like the head of the product, what would you do? Or you can say you should focus on in terms of the pain areas. So ask these specific questions about users. Then what are their plans? It's imperative that, okay, what is it in pipeline for them for the next year or like next two years? Like for example, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, what are they responsible delivering onto the product? Which needs to be informed ahead of time. And is there something which like research can really help them understand ahead of time? So that's where their, you know, like, uh, like mind starts thinking from the research perspective. Okay, yes, these are the blank spaces or the gray areas. I want more information about the user or the product or like even testing some concepts that, okay, I'm not sure that this might work well. I, it's more of a hypothesis for me. So have those very clearly defined in terms of question, like ask follow-up questions if you have more and if you need more detail around it. If research could answer, you know, like focus on one research question, what do you think that should be? So out of all the issues that they've been citing about the users of the product, what is it that requires immediate attention? Where research should focus primarily going forward at first. So I think that's important here to cite. So, so that it's clear in the, their head as well that, okay, there are like 10 problems, but out of them, this one problem requires more attention from the research perspective. And lastly, what are you hearing from clients? Like, what is it in the market about the product we're hearing? Is it like more like more perspective or more experience like experience related? But what is it that they're thinking about? So, ask these four or five, six questions, and just like asking follow-up questions about the product. If you know anything, you've heard about it. Asking them is always a good idea to like have a better context. It will help you when you analyze your data around this. So this was all about exploration of your data. How do you go about doing it? Third stage. So this was the coalition synthesis format, which I used to capture my data from 
product team for each question if you see design team dev team so i just vertically align entire data from them for each question that they mentioned so what is good so that it's easy for me to create themes out of this uh, like like the entire data third comes the theme building aspect i think the most interesting one from the researcher perspective because you analyze data like huge set of data and then you come up with something so it's important to club some common questions and themes uh, from different stakeholders so pm marketing design so they might also have some common cords or the common questions from the users or from the product perspective that might be the answer so you understand the commonalities now that okay yeah these are common things you start creating those themes the question might sound different that's okay but you should start doing it that ways list all the questions together you have you should have a laundry list of all the questions that associates or are connected to that particular theme so that it's easy for you to understand and it's also easier for your stakeholders that okay the other stakeholders are also thinking about these questions under this theme so that it's quite you know like uh, transparent to them as well like about the other uh, questions on it add articulations articulations or anecdotes really help in building up a case around those themes or around those problems that where are they coming from so a marketing guy might not be aware how product is thinking or how design is thinking so they need to be aligned together and really help that okay the person might not be wrong they're coming from a certain experience with the customers or like on the product or from the users itself right so that way you can add articulations into it tie back to your questions or insights list all the themes on a mural or mural together so i used so i'm a, like huge fan of mural and mural because it gives me endless space to collate my data include everything don't think that okay this is not since it's been talked by one stakeholder it might not have an importance so it's okay so everyone can't think everything about a product so it might be a thought starter for the other stakeholders as well so encapsulate everything the most talked and least talked together onto that mural board have it clearly defined and you know like uh, segregated as per the themes the questions articulations it should be clear to them make sure that you avoid any ambiguity so so like a mistake which i made that since i was new to the product i did not knew that the two aspects could be named differently or you can say the same aspect can be named differently into that product so i created two separate themes for that and then when i validated it through like one of the stakeholders and they said that no no it's actually the same you can club in together so that's what i learned so avoid any ambiguity or repetition of your things you can do that as well but till here it's only theme building you are still to prioritize themes with the stakeholders you are nowhere close to prioritization yet okay it's theme building to here next step is to prioritize them you have everything together on a single platform next step and this is the theme format i used for my work so i collected themes uh, like like having sub themes into a single box the questions areas of inquiry and then participant articulations to like horizontally placed for each of the questions and themes accordingly so that's what i used you can use it in the same way if you have like anything better feel free you're pretty flexible as a researcher to do that next comes the like the most important which is the prioritization thing so the challenge which i faced was around getting all 12 15 people together in a single workshop it's not that easy pretty senior folks less on time different time zone everything was a challenge for me it was not at all easy but since it's your work you need to get the clarity you need you are working for a product and a company so you need to push them that okay this is important from the perspective that that you need to be involved here everyone and you should not be blamed like later on that okay your suggestion or your research or your like area of uh, you know like investigation were not considered by the research so show them that vision that okay why is it important to have the prioritization exercise in a workshop format so how to get it prioritized so like conduct a theme prioritization workshop first of all the stakeholders do that but try to that share all the themes or the mural board that you've created with the stakeholders so that at least they have a cursory level understanding of the themes ask them to look okay, at please come prepared or like read the mural through with all the themes together so that it makes your work easier so i like learned this 
while I was conducting the workshop that I spent around like 15, 20 minutes in making them understand about the themes that I've created. So I think it's a good idea to give them prior to your meeting, ask them to read it, come prepared with exactly and like what are we expecting to do during that session with them? Okay. Sometimes, so like, and like allow them some time to you know just refresh their memory about the themes and learnings and questions and articulations from different stakeholders. So give them around like 10, 15 minutes to, okay, yeah, let's go through, or like you take them through with the, uh, you know, like uh, those themes that, okay, this is like what I've got, and these are the key questions I've been hearing from other stakeholders. I've got it here. You like need not take name of a stakeholder there. You just need to focus on the data that has come about the themes that that has been talked about or the questions that are there on the main board. Decision time for 15, 20 minutes. Now, like here's the catch, like you need to give them a format or a kind of a quadrant or a graph where you have like high priority, low priority, high impact, low impact kind of a format to place those themes or the questions that, you know, like are really to be prioritized from the re research perspective, give them some time to discuss. It's okay, like they'll not fight. They'll not, you know, like scratch their heads or, you know, like throw stones at like, like each other, uh, or like at the each other. So it's important to give them some time to prioritize those things, right? Let them place on their own, like how do they interpret? Once they are done with this activity, you just ask them that what are the key reasons for doing it? I think it's important to ask that so that everybody's on board that, okay, these three things holds more importance from the research perspective. Here, the research time and effort should go first, keeping everything aside. There might be other things as well, which might go in parallel, but yeah, this requires immediate attention of the researcher. Rank and reiterate. So that's what I was talking about. So ask them to rank it. Okay, this is first, second, third. Reiterate. So talk about it. Okay, is my understanding correct about your ranking, or is there something uh, like in terms of change required from the ranking perspective? So reiterate. It's important to get that clarity and confirmation from them so that there's no confusion later on. This is something like map in terms of the higher priority, low priority, which I used. During my roadmap, uh, like workshop activity, I asked them to you know, like place those themes or questions in the map itself, and it, they were able to discuss, talk to each other. Okay, this like requires more, and this is like to be delegated later on or eliminated. So I got a bunch of themes to be prioritized, especially in the first quadrant, which is high priority, high impact, and also high priority, low impact. So I got like this was the key area for me to work as a researcher to create that roadmap going forward to finalize that form further next comes the finalization of it so based on your exercise you are now clear that out of 10 themes these five require more attention from you from the research activity perspective the map should be consist consisting of the following activity like which themes are to be finally included so you have like five themes one two three four five aligned together. Next comes like, what is the research all about? So what are the areas that require investigation? It should be there on the map itself. So it should include your topic, your context, your objectives, and your questions. So it could be uh, like a mix of everything so that any stakeholder who is not aware of this map should understand exactly what is it the research is all about. So I think it's your job to think about your audience and create that roadmap pretty clearly that it should be a one stop shop for everything for any person who do not have any context about this roadmap earlier should be pretty clear to them who all are responsible design pm engineering researcher clearly stated in the roadmap who will be doing what who is the key contact person from the design product engineering who should be aligned directly onto that project and who could be you know like someone who could help or assist so everything should be included there pretty clearly. When, most important one, the timelines. You're working in the first quarter, six weeks, eight weeks. You want to talk in months, talk in months. If you want to talk in weeks, talk in weeks. Totally up to you. Keep it flexible. But timeline should be there. And you, as a researcher, should be, you know, like always revisiting in terms of times, okay, 
and enterprise products have this tendency to you know like like have a spillover kind of an effect sometimes the users oriented like stakeholders or SMEs are not available so it's imperative that you talk about you know like you just mention it and just extend or update it accordingly if those timelines are spilling over to some other project you can do that accordingly okay how you can also you know like add the methodologies or system methodologies like okay you will be doing it like qualitative quantitative evaluative generative or some particular approach around doing focus groups or one-on-one -on -one interviews diary study you will have like like always have flexibility to add that so that there is an idea you are also you know, like uh, remembering it pretty clearly directly what i proposed and like is it the best method that's not a benchmark for sure but yes you can change it later on but having it on that map uh, you know like uh, makes it clear to everyone and like in the team about the methodology as well if possible add some keys for highlighting high priority low priority projects like which requires immediate attention like in spite of that so for example something which is ongoing you can just like use a green dot so i just created this roadmap when i was working so i use these keys like ongoing research high on priority like it's like kind of fire like which is on fire and it like requires immediate attention with everything together uh, it will really clarify things in life as a researcher and for the other team members who do not have any idea that where i'm working on it's easy to you know like get the idea around like my working and how product researches will go on like for the entire year if you have any questions around this or like anything to add feel free to add so this is my way of doing it lastly it's important to revisit and update set a half yearly like a kind of target like really look at the roadmap talk to stakeholders that okay has anything changed so like something or the other in terms of the management changes the product uh, you know roadmap in some way or the other and is there like something which is pending like what is it like achieved so far like is the productivity you know like like as uh, intended or not so all things can be you know like uh, judged around revisiting your roadmap like half yearly basis do that so i think that is suggested to do and uh, and you can really pace up things accordingly and you can also talk to management to you need some extra resources because the requests are coming in and your existing work is getting suffered because of some extra requests from the stakeholders so these are some of the things like you can do and uh, yep uh, i think this is uh, what i had to share and thank you and the code which I go by, like usually, is like best way to do uh, learn things is by doing it. So I would suggest that you do it on your own. Like learn if you have any like other like unique idea to do it. Please feel free. And yep, best of luck. And if you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, just reach out to me on LinkedIn or like right now you can share it with me. I'm more than happy to take up those like in my capacity. Thanks, Lokesh, and uh, thanks everyone for attending. Uh, you can unmute your uh, mic for uh, to ask if you have any questions for Lokesh, or you can type it out on the, in the chat box, and I can then read it out to Lokesh. You can criticize as well, like if you want. Don't worry. Hello. Hi. Yeah, hi. This is Manisha from Bangalore. Yeah, hi, so Manisha. Yeah. So um, thank you so much, Lokesh. I mean, it was uh, very uh, informative. I actually wanted to really uh, know about all those things so that uh, people usually go through in a uh, bigger organization and when it comes to enterprise uh, product. Right. Yeah. So 
actually it's uh, related to prioritization when you talk mm -hmm. so i wanted to understand like um so does timeline or budget or any other dependencies um these these things does impact while doing the prioritization upfront or uh, does it come later on because what i understand like there are research projects which are like uh, you know can be conducted in one month or two months there are some projects some questions that can be you know uh, will take even longer time like for diary studies it'll, it'll take longer duration right so mm -hmm. how does timeline or uh, you know uh, dependencies based on the methodologies also you can say does it impact the prioritization in the beginning or does it come later on when you revisit how does it, it impact and what was your experience specifically you know um, with different team different uh, product different company it varies so i would love to hear your experience that's on that question, actually that's a good question i haven't thought about it yet <laughs> but yeah like you know like, uh, when you are working on a roadmap your prime motive is to get clarity about aspects about the product which really requires your attention like rest all comes secondary so your budget your time it becomes secondary you can propose as a researcher that okay like okay the, these are the areas you have your questions like ready around a particular aspect or a particular theme and you have to identify where you know like um, you know, wisely that okay this requires so much of time that for example i am you know like working on some strategic research and it took me around so i proposed around eight weeks of time to my stakeholder but it took me 12 weeks to do it but it's completely fine that's like 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 later on that when productivity will be you know like uh, the feedback around productivity will come the prime focus is to give your stakeholders the desired results timeline is like really not a very worrisome you know like the like area for any of the stakeholder as of now and like i think that's also a positive aspect of enterprise product because like they are huge you do have some flexibility around time and working with the stakeholders so you can propose that okay this is something which is taking time for me sometimes it does happen that the users or your clients are not available you need to chase them it takes so much of time there so timelines actually you can't foresee while you are devising a roadmap so it's important that you do your best in terms of pro proposing so for example if you have to do a diary study so you need to understand exactly what kind of output is expected from the diary study is it like a week or a month how much and operationally how much it is like feasible or practical to be done so like with enterprise like products it's not easy to do a month long like even a week is longer so you you can have three to five days so all those assumptions you need to take care before you commit any timeline to like in the roadmap itself you can revisit after three months and okay this is taking time you can extend accordingly and it will have you can say like a further implication on the timeline for the other products and you keep your stakeholders updated around it does it answer your question manisha yeah yeah it does <laughs> yeah it does so actually uh, yeah i mean in a different company people face different uh, situation yeah. um, similarly with a different problem or the product also so i mean exactly. experience varies that's why i was very keen to understand your experience uh, in particular so i do it, have actually yeah, i do yeah. have like what should i propose and yeah. that, so like i need to you know like get some time and because like with that timeline you are nowhere yeah it's so this big. yeah so there is basically no specific way uh, um, you can go and revisit even uh, when it comes to methodologies also exactly. what i understand like if the exactly. question is critical and some methodology will take time so probably totally. you can revisit on the methodology so that you can answer uh, taking a shorter also, route kind of like also need to make some tactical calls when you're working on the project you can't like foresee like everything as a researcher something mm -hmm. happen when you are into that project and you did not yeah. take them into consideration so it will happen it will have an implication around the timelines and like on like even on your output or the playbacks that you do so yeah. that's totally okay until unless you are communicating and well with the stakeholders you are establishing that clear you know like a like expectation that okay this will take so much of time this is like the reason around it they will understand for sure if mm -hmm. they are open-minded around it so that's yeah it. 
Yeah. Thank you so much, Lokesh. All the best. Yeah, thank you so much. Seems like there are no other questions. I have not received any questions in the chat. Um, does anyone have any other questions? If I yes, golden. I think silence is golden, oh, Harris. If yes, uh, please. Uh, by the way, I'm not it's Harris. Uh, I'm uh, uh, Soro. So. Yeah, Soro. Sorry, so I didn't know who was speaking. Sorry. Uh, so, if anyone else has any question, please. Unmute your microphone now and ask directly. If you want to connect yes. one to one with me, you can just reach out to me on LinkedIn. Feel free. Okay. Uh, seems like there are no further questions. So thanks once again, Lokesh, for this very interesting session. Pleasure. Um, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining. That's it for today. See you next week. Thanks, Thanks. everyone. See you.